You're listening to the Platte River Bard. All right, so hello, hello, and welcome to the Platte River Bard. This is Chris Berger. And I'm Sherry Berger. And welcome to What's Happening. What's Happening. For the first couple of weeks of February, up until around the 14th of February, we think. And then we'll yeah. hop back in and do the back half of February. We thought we could get away with just doing one for January because there wasn't that much going on. No. We, but no. We were wrong. <laughs> There's a lot going on. There's a lot of rescheduling going on. Too. Yes. A lot of stuff shuffling around. So every two weeks. And I, when I see... I, I re- think we've settled every two weeks. I think so, too. <laughs> and when I see a reschedule, I do share it on our social media, on our Facebook page, if that's helpful. Yes, indeed. So. All right. Well, what's happening, Sherry? Up until about mid-February, we're going to start off with Beatrice Community Players. They're doing Clue on stage. February 11th, 12th, 13th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. Friday, Saturdays are at 7.30 Sundays are at 2 p.m. It's a comedy mystery based on the screenplay by Jonathan Lynn, written by Sandy Rustin, based on the Paramount Pictures motion picture and the Hasbro board game Clue. Original music by Michael Holland, directed by Tyler Rhine. That is Clue on stage at Beatrice Community Players. And in Bellevue at the Bellevue Little Theater, they are doing the last weekend of Death by Design by Rob Urbanati. It's directed by John Flowers. We did a podcast with him last month as well to talk about the production. Mm -hmm. This is a mashup of two great English writers, Noel Coward and Agatha Christie, set in an English country manor in 1932. Two performances left, February 4th and 5th, which is Friday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. All right, now we're at Benson at the Benson Theater St. James, St. Elizabeth, and Selton Melodrama, and Olio, variety show including singing, dancing, and comedy sketches. Oh yes, that is February 18th to 20th, the 25th and 26th, all at 7.30 p.m. There's a matinee on February 26th at 2 p.m. Masks are required. And in Fremont, at Midlands University Performing Arts, they're doing Pippin. That was February 3rd through the 6th. That's Thursday through Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Sunday at 2 p.m. It's directed by Devin Hansen. An ensemble cast tells the story of Pippin, the man born to be king or rather emperor, who has a problem, boredom. Pippin, eldest son of Charlemagne, tired of books, war, love, and politics, in his quest for happiness, longs to discover the secret of true happiness and fulfillment. And over at the Hastings Community Theater, they're doing Little Shop of Horrors, the musical, February 18th through 20th, 25th through the 27th. The Fridays and Saturday performances are at 7.30 p.m., and the Sunday performances are at 2.30 p.m. That's Hastings Community Theater, Little Shop of Horrors. And in Lincoln at the Angels Theatre Company, their salon reading series is doing Hatch by Peter Mercurio, February 6th at 2 p.m. at Turbine Flats Project, 2124 Y Street in Lincoln. This is a play about recognition. Hatch is a fresh yet stark slice of Americana that follows one family's struggle with loss, mistrust, and what it means to die with dignity. Masks are required. All right, and over at Blixit Locally Grown is Pretty Fire by Charlene Woodard. That's February 22nd in Lincoln and February 27th and 28th in Kearney. Is there anything pretty about fire? Certainly not when it's a giant cross burning near your grandmother's house in the Deep South. For a 10-year-old girl growing up in upstate New York, it's a site that reveals new truths about the world. Winner of the NAACP Theater Awards for Best Play and Best Playwright This touching, one-woman tour de force takes audiences on a journey through a world where hope abounds and family bonds remain as strong as steel. Pretty Fire, featuring actress Marika Gray, is produced by Crane River Theater in Kearney. The Lincoln performance is presented by Blixit Locally Grown in partnership with CRT. The audiences will be limited to 35 members, and they are also asking for people to wear masks and bring proof of vaccination. 
They're doing a lot of that in Lincoln. Yes, that's a that's a thing in Lincoln. It is. Uh, the Lead Center for Performing Arts is doing E.N. Thompson Forum, Anna Devereaux Smith, a conversation on race and the arts at 4 p.m. And at 7.30 p.m., she'll perform Notes from the Field. This will be February 9th. Anna Devereaux Smith is a world renowned playwright, actress, author, journalist, and educator who has been credited with creating a new form of theater. For four decades, Devereaux Smith has used theater and movies to reveal the effects of inequity and discord on American communities. The E.N. Thompson Forum was established in 1988 with the purpose of bringing diversity of viewpoints on international and public policy issues to the university and people of Nebraska to promote understanding and encourage discussion. Notes from the Field is a one-woman show featuring characters drawn from over 250 interviews that will shock, enlighten, and inspire your soul. The school-to-prison pipeline is impacting young people across the nation, including here in Nebraska. Hear real-life stories performed by an amazing Tony and Pulitzer Award-nominated artist. Due to adult language and subject matter, the show is recommended for audiences ages 13 and up, and that's at the Lead Center. All right, over at the Lincoln Community Playhouse, Every Brilliant Thing by Duncan McMillan and Johnny Donahoe. Ashley Cobza stars in this one-person, funny, and very human play. The last weekend is February 5th, or 4th, 5th, and 6th. Uh, the masks and proof of vaccination are required. A negative COVID uh, test, home kit results not accepted within 72 hours prior to the performance is required. Yep. And Omni Arts Nebraska is doing 35 millimeter, a musical exhibition, February 3rd through the 5th at 7.30 p.m. and February 6th at 2 p.m. Music and lyrics by Ryan Scott Oliver, based on photography by Matthew Murray. A picture is worth a thousand words. What about a song? Can a picture inspire a song or 15? In 35 millimeter, each photo creates a unique song, moments frozen in time, a glimmer of life unfolding, a glimpse of something happening, a stunning new multimedia musical that explores a groundbreaking new concept in musical theater. This intricately woven collection of stories told through song reimagines what the modern American musical can be. Performed at the Johnny Carson Theater and the production is made possible by a project grant from the Lincoln Arts Council. Over at the Nebraska Repertory Theater is Away to the Way, starting February 23rd and running through March 6th. Sundays are at 2 p.m. All other evenings are at 7.30 p.m. It's at the Howell Theater. Centuries ago in ancient China, a wise and humble old sage named Lao Tzu mounted an ox and journeyed to the Western Gate. Before disappearing into the mountains of Tibet, he composed one of the most profound books ever written, the Tao Te Ching, the Book of the Way. Join Nebraska Rep as we explore the eternal Tao with breathtaking visuals, large-scale puppetry, and enduring wisdom for the ages. Hmm. It's a way to the way in Nebraska Repertory Theater. And the Nebraska Wesleyan University Theater at the Elder Theater Center is doing Bondagers, Written by Sue Glover, this is the last weekend, 4th, 5th, and 6th of February. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday shows at 7.30 and Sunday at 2 p.m. For the Scottish women who work in bondage to powerful farmers, injustice and hardship grow like vines. These resilient women must bond together to root their strength in something even deeper than Scotland's soil. This is for mature audiences. They're also doing Little Women this month. February 17th through the 20th and the 24th through the 27th. Thursday through Saturday shows will be at 7.30 p.m. and Sundays at 2 p.m. How many movies have they made of Pippin and not Little Women? I mean, they've made a lot of Little Women, but how many movies have they made of Pippin? A couple, and the Broadway version got released, which has which had uh, has William Cott, the greatest American hero, as Pippin. Hmm. Yeah. Very young, William Codd. Anyway, <clears throat> at the Tada Theater, they're doing Why Do Fools Fall in Love from February 10th through the 27th. The evening performances are at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday matinees are at 2 p.m. It's live and also streaming. Mm-hmm. Catherine Bops in this production is playing Millie. 
Uh, She's a friend of the podcast. Yes, she is. Kylie Ensrid plays Sally. Chris Rook plays Dee Dee. Aaron Mundus plays Florence. Robert D. Rook is the director. Chris Rook is the musical director, featuring smash pop hits from the 1960s, such as My Boy Lollipop, I Will Follow Him, You Don't Have to Say You Love Me, and Hey There, Lonely Boy. This show celebrates Millie getting married. At her impromptu bachelorette party, she and her best friends share their thoughts on love, marriage, and the dating game. As the celebration and fun continues, this uplifting show reaffirms that during life's struggles, true friendship will unveil its everlasting strength. Proof of vaccination for entry or proof of negative test within 72 hours for the performance masks required. Tada has some on-demand performances through Show Ticks for You to check out also. And we did Show Ticks for You for the Lofts production that, um, that they let people view in January and it worked really well we did it on our Amazon uh, oh yes that was a Christmas at Leon's we Mm -hmm. watched we did it on our Amazon fire right yes and it worked like a uh, yeah it worked great it worked really well perfect yeah Mm -hmm. right right to the yes Mm -hmm. that worked very well that was that was our first experience with that yeah and it worked perfect I I enjoyed it I have I have no problem with that yeah it worked great and Christmas at Leon's was great yeah and you know what oddly enough they're the next ones up in Manly at the oh, Loft Community there Theater. There we go. Speaking of. Because <laughs> I do these alphabetically, so that's kind of funny. In Manly at the Loft Community Theater, February 27th at 2 p.m., they're having their annual meeting and volunteer recognition event. On the 15th and 16th at 7 p.m., they're doing auditions for Harvey. And on February 22nd and 23rd at 7 p.m., they're doing auditions for visiting Mr. Green. So they're starting to gear up over there. It sounds like it. All right, over the North Platte Community Playhouse. Auditions for Clue on stage February 28th and March 1st at 7 p.m. Anyone 18 and up is welcome to audition. The play will be directed by Lori Evans. Okay. And at the Circle Theater, they're doing Shakespeare's Lovers. The performance dates are February 18th, 19th, and 25th, and 26th, with shows beginning at 7 p.m. This play, written by Libby Apple and Michael Fleischman, is organized into two acts and contains four dramatic sections, discovering love, seeking advice about love, having problems with love, and finding solutions to love's problems. Masks are required for all performances. They're going to be performing at 4444 Francis Street in Omaha. And that's at Circle Theater. Over at Creighton University, the lead education center for the arts, they are doing Electra, Greek tragedy by Sophocles. Set in the city of Argos, a few years after the Trojan War, the play tells of a bitter struggle for justice by Electra and her brother Orestes for the murder of their father Agamemnon. From February 16th through the 20th, Wednesday through Saturday at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. And at the Omaha Community Playhouse, they are finally getting to do Bright Star. Yay! They rescheduled the dates from February 4th through the 13th. Wednesday through Saturday shows are at 7.30 p.m. Sunday's at 2 p.m. And on Sunday, February 13th, they're doing a second show at 6.30 p.m. This is directed by Roxanne Walk. Bright Star is a story of enduring hope, woven through time and set against the backdrop of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Young teenager Alice Murphy is devastated when her infant son is ripped away. But 20 years later, a young man enters her life and ushers in an unexpected glimmer of hope. With a Grammy-nominated bluegrass score that will seep into your veins, Bright Star is as much of a musical experience as it is a journey of the heart. They are also streaming this production. So to purchase streaming tickets, call the OCP box office at 402-553-0800. It looks like they're doing streaming for every single performance, and what they're doing is live streaming. So it's not like it's recorded, and then you can just purchase the streaming for whenever. Right. You have to purchase it for a specific time like you would purchase seats. Yeah. It looks like it's only going to be available when it's actually running. Yes. But what a great option. Yes. Fantastic. At the Omaha Community Bright Star. Place. Finally. There we go. All right. Omaha Performing Arts. Fiddler on the Roof. From February 8th to the 13th. Tuesdays through Fridays, it's at 7.30 p.m., Saturday at 2 p.m. and 7.30 p.m., Sunday 
at 1 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. That's Omaha Performing Arts, Fiddler on the Roof. And at the Rose Theater, they're doing Carmela Full of Wishes. It opened January 28th and runs through February 13th. Friday shows are at 7 p.m. Saturday shows are at 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. And Sunday shows are at 2 p.m. This is adapted by Alvaro Sarrios from the book by Matt De La Pena. This is directed by Anna Skittis Vargas. The Newberry award-winning team behind Last Stop on Market Street portrays Carmela's migrant community as a vibrant place of possibility. Full of touching and funny fantasies, Carmela must decide what her deepest wish is and what she must do before her birthday is over. I also noticed that this is a member event, so members of the Rose are going to receive four free tickets to the show, and they can reserve their free tickets now by calling the box office. UNO Theater at the Weber Fine Arts Building is featuring Lisa Faye Kootley Wednesday, February 9th at 7.30 p.m. at the Chris Library, and also it's a Zoom event. Lisa Faye Kootley is a poet and the author of Tether, Errata, and In the Carnival of Breathing, as well as the Associate Professor of Poetry and Creative Nonfiction in the Writer's Workshop at the University of Nebraska in Omaha. This is a free event, and you'll need to register online. Okay. All right, so we're going to head on over and talk about a little bit of digital content right now, and we'll talk about Edge of the Universe, Inner Worlds. This is a show created by Katie Otten. This is a YouTube series, a live-action web series about the highly unimaginative world of Dungeons & Dragons and the relationships forged in the fires of the game. Written by Katie Otten and made locally in Omaha, Nebraska. And Dungeons & Dragons is very close to your heart. Yes, indeed. I've been playing since 1977. <laughs> to find out more about this and where to watch, visit innerworldsseries.com. The Power, the Peril, and the Promise of the Creative Economy that was held on January 19th. It was a forum that was recorded and is now available on YouTube. And if you listen to our podcast with the Executive Director, Petra Walkovis from Nebraskans for the Arts, she talked about this event and how unusual it was because speakers from all around the country testified about how the arts economy has been affected. Their efforts received national press coverage of the house hearing so something to check out and get involved in mm -hmm. absolutely and over at the union of contemporary arts pursuing legacy is ongoing until june 16th of this year 2022 pursuing legacy is a new experimental immersive theater experience from the union for contemporary arts this unique Storytelling approach combines the mediums of immersive theater and alternate reality games as you study and solve the riddles and clues located at monuments scattered around North Omaha. You will experience a story told through the eyes of Grace Thomas, a fictional documentarian. This runs through June 16th of this year. Also, the exhibition of Mavis Pousset will be at the Wanda D. Ewing Gallery until February 26th. The New York Times named Pousset as the leading abstractionist of the 20th century with her bold geometric forms to reflect the dynamism of the ever-changing urban landscape. And in Omaha for comedy at the back line, February 5th, they're doing the comedy kickback at 7 p.m., the Broken Magic Comedy Hour at 8.30 p.m., and at 10 p.m., they're doing comedy after dark. On February 12th, they're doing date night, at 7 p.m. February 19th, Your Mom's Comedy Show at 7 p.m. and Babes in Joyland at 7.30 p.m. On February 26th, Cards of Destiny at 7 p.m. and Will Darty Loves Company at 8.30 p.m. The back line is located at 1618 Harney Street. All right. And Big Canvas is closed until March. They are located at 3624 Farnham Street. Okay, we'll have some visual arts over in Omaha, the Hot Shops. The February exhibition is Scanxiety, and this is by Rachel Mendrup, and this is about her son's journey through neurofibromytosis, and this will be through February 28th. And at Kaneko in downtown Omaha, they're doing monumental works January 15th through March 15th. This is a collection of globally recognized works by monumental sculptural artists. They're also doing their Saturday family time November 6th to May 28th of 2022 from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So bring your kids. 
A Jocelyn in downtown Omaha, Faces of the Interior. The North American portraits of Carl Bodmer every Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. The exhibit runs until May 1st of 2022. That's this year. And they're also doing Sonadora, Yui Morales exhibition, and that runs until April 17th. Uh, Yui Morales is a native of Mexico and an award-winning author and illustrator of children's picture books. And in Visual Arts at Lincoln, the Great Plains Art Museum in Lincoln is doing a vital presence. Native art at the Great Plains Art Museum until March 19th. Currently showing a collection of native art featuring artists from diverse Great Plains and Southwest Indigenous tribes. This exhibition highlights the perspectives of these artists while emphasizing the ongoing presence and vitality of Indigenous peoples in our region. The museum is located at 11 55 Q Street in Lincoln. Over to Boca, Fiddler's Tune Book Play Along, February 11th at 7 p.m. Online from the Old Aboca Schoolhouse. Play and discuss tunes from the Greenblatt and CA publication, February Fiddler's Tune Book. And on February 25th, they will stream Practical Practicing Workshop. And in Kearney, Sela will be live at the Merryman on February 11th at 7 p.m. They are a Christian vocal trio. All right, and over in Lincoln, the Nebraska Arts Council, selections from the Collection Studios Print Collection that runs through February 20th. It's a compilation of works representing a veritable who's who of artists from across the cultural landscape. That'll be held at Constellation Studios on O Street. And Stravinsky, Still in White, will be on February 20th at the Lead Center at 7.30 p.m. John Bailey, who is the Lincoln Symphony Orchestra's principal flute player and their composer in residence, Dr. Tyler G. White, will perform. Over at the Governor's Residence Gallery, it's the Aaron Cross Exhibition, Spaces and Places, that begins February 11th and runs through May 6th. Gallery visits have to be scheduled in advance through the Governor's Residence. And in Omaha, the OEAA Visual Art Showcase will be held February 4th through March 5th. There's a reception on the 4th and the 11th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And it's at the RBR Gallery at 1806 Fenton Street in Omaha. This is the Roberts and Bob Rogers Gallery. First take vocal jazz, Jazz from the Heart. That'll be on Sunday, February 13th at 3 p.m. at the Presbyterian Church of the Cross. That's at 1517 South 114th Street, Omaha. Now this is with Grammy Award-winning conductor, Dr. Jeremy Frost. Jazz from the Heart is a sextet from the School for Music Vocations at Southwestern Community College in Creston, Iowa. Vesper concerts are offered free of charge. And Opera Omaha is doing Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, February 25th at 7.30 and February 27th at 2 p.m. We spoke to Lauren Medici earlier in the fall about this production, so check out that podcast. Yes. But the Omaha Opera will be doing free opera in conversations for Sweeney Todd. That will be the inspiration and process Inspiration, Process, and Insights on February 8th at 6 p.m. at the Benson Theater. And they're also streaming that online. They're doing a conversation with Rise February 15th at 6 p.m. at the UNO Barbara White's Community Engagement Center. And they're also streaming that one online. Rise is a a Nebraska-based nonprofit whose mission is to break the generational cycles of incarceration. They're doing After the Curtain Call on March 1st at the Benson Theater and streaming that online and proof of vaccination and masks are required for the in-person conversations. The Omaha Symphony at the Jocelyn Art Museum. Perry Gilmore plays St. George's. That's February 6th at 2 p.m. Pre-talk at 1 p.m. to hear about selected masterpiece from the museum's world-class collection. And ball and a time for three, February 11th and 12th, at 7.30 p.m., the genre bending trio Time for Three joins Jennifer uh, Higdon's Concerto 4-3, and the orchestra performs Rachmaninoff's Sympathy No. 2 in E minor. Also at the Holland Center, Landslide, a tribute to the music of Fleetwood Mac. Mm. Legendary music played and sang along with an orchestra. Landslide is the tribute band name. And in news... And in news... 
The Omaha Summer Arts Festival, which will be held June 10th through the 12th, is accepting proposals from local artists for mural cubes until February 25th. And also, the Lincoln Arts Festival is accepting arts artist applications for their summer event, which will be held June 18th and the 19th. This is a two-day festival. Artists should apply via ZAPP, Z-A-P-P, by February 18th, 2022. Noise, North Omaha Information Support Everyone has created an Omaha Civil Rights History Timeline that can be requested on their website, along with donations for future printing costs. Noise partnered with BFF Omaha to call for BIPOC artists and selected five incredible pieces to be featured on the back of each timeline. Mars Black, Jada Messick, Nathan Rouleau, Sarah Hummel-Jones, and Notori Pittman. They also hired graphic designer Rico Childs to bring the concept to life. All right, and Nebraskans for the Arts, they have the their Nebraska Arts Advocacy Day coming up on Wednesday, February 16th. Yes, indeed. That is the day when Nebraskans from across the state come together to learn, celebrate, and advocate for the creative sector and arts education for all. Like last year, they follow up with their virtual meetings where you and other members from your district can meet with your senator to talk about creative sector issues that are important to you. And that is February 16th. So make sure to register online on their website. All right. And guess what? We did a podcast about that. Yes. And also, (laughs) guess what again? Oh, yeah. I was shocked. I was shocked. It's finally happened, folks. Beyond Van Gogh, an immersive experience is coming to Omaha, and we have a date and a place. Place. It opens June 23rd. It runs through August 14th at the Mid-America Center and Council Bluffs. Can you believe it? Tickets go on sale at VanGoOmaha.com. Ticket prices are $39.99 for adults and $23.99 for children ages 5 to 15. Children under 5 are free. I'll read the description since they're actually really coming. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Beyond Van Gogh is a new, truly immersive experience. While other shows use virtual reality or still images, their show breaks barriers by incorporating both still and moving art. Masterpieces, now freed from frames, come alive, appear, disappear, float across multi-surfaces. The minutia of details titillating our heightened senses. The show is projected on every surface around you. This makes you feel as though you have stepped directly into a Van Gogh painting. They accompany the show with a beautiful score and include many other surprises. June 23rd to August 14th at the Mid-America Center. Beyond Van Gogh. Can you believe it? <laughs> and I've seen mixed reviews on it. Yeah, I, I, But who knows? I think most people are pretty excited. It looks neat. Yeah. So, there you go. That's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> it looks cool. <laughs> And for our category reminders for submissions, we have a few that we have found that we would like to share with you. The National Endowment for the Arts grants for arts Mm. projects taking place in the beginning of 2023. The application deadlines are February 10th and July 7th of 2022. There we go. Omaha Fringe 2022. Huzzah! Applications opened on January 3rd. Applications, Applications will stay open until February 15th for Omaha Fringe this year. And Amplify Arts have their Artist Support Grant submission deadline for the 2022 Black American Artist Support Grant and Indigenous American Artist Support Grant that opened January 24th, and that will close on Sunday, February 17th at 11.59 p.m. And Amplify Arts had an Artist Support Grant Writing Workshop on February 1st through Zoom, and they are offering now a artist support grant office hours event to ask questions while you work on your application on February 17th at 6 p.m. also through Zoom. All right, and then Why Arts Incorporated. Why Arts is looking to expand their roster of subcontracted professional teaching artists. Dancers, painters, poets, puppeteers, and performers. Go to www.whyartsinc.org to see if their mission resonates with you. If so, contact them at info at whyartsinc.org for details. And the Mid-American Arts Alliance, MAAA, Arts Innovation Grants 
there is a deadline of those on February 16th. The Artist Innovation Grant Program encourages the spirit of experimentation and exploration, exclusively engaging in region artists, Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Texas in the creation of new original works for audiences in the Mid-American Arts Alliance region. These grants are open to both individual artists and nonprofit arts and cultural organizations. Artistic Innovations offers up to $15,000 in support of expenses incurred in the art-making process and premiere of these endeavors. Applications are open for the fiscal year 2023 grant year for projects taking place between July 1st, 2022 and July 30th, 2023. The application process will close on Wednesday, February 16th. And to find out more information and get the links on where to apply for those grants, go to maaa.org. All right. That's the way it is, man. And in other reminders, don't forget TAGG, Together a Greater Good, to scan your receipts and choose your favorite organization for participating businesses to make a donation to your favorite nonprofit. <laughs> And also, the Theater Arts Guild Omaha, that's T-A-1-G, for Omaha Artist Support and Education. And Appearing Locally, that's appearinglocally.com, for Lincoln Area Shows and Reviews. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you for listening, Sherry. (laughs) We hope you find this information useful. Me too. Should you have any shows, art, or performance art you would like to share with us, please email us, platriverbardnews at gmail.com. There you go. Perfecto. All right. I think that's all we have for this week, Mrs. Sherry. Happy February. Yes, happy February. Don't forget your Valentine's. That's right. We'll be back hopefully on or around Valentine's Day to give you an update for the rest of the month. See you next time. Thank you for listening and supporting the arts in the Platte River area and beyond. Please subscribe to our podcast so you are sure to catch all of our future episodes and join us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Music for this podcast was used with permission by Screaming Skull Productions. See you next time on the Platte River Bard.